Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to bring you some reference material that I, I started reading recently. I don't know why recently because it's been around a while, but I started reading them and I fell in love. And I want to bring this material to you. It's called Classic Correspondence from the Egyptian Hall Museum. It's in right now four volumes. I suspect that there'll be other volumes coming. These things are absolutely fantastic. If I can just show you a little bit of the inside. Uh, what you get here, see if I give you an example. So you have a letter. And back, back in these days, by the way, uh, this was the golden age primarily. People didn't have email. They didn't have uh, other forms of communication that we do today. So they wrote letters and often on very elaborate letterhead. So what Mike Caveney has done here is he's reproduced the actual letter. Then he's giving you some commentary, some background, some history on who these people are, what the context of the letter is. And then, and then he gives you, uh, he gives you the letter and then commentary based on the letter. So uh, this, this is a college education in magic history. I would not miss it. Uh, right now it's in four volumes. I think it is absolutely delicious. I remember I, I got the first one, got the first one only a few weeks ago, and I read this thing in less than a week. And I, by the way, I only read because I'm, I'm still working uh, a day job, so I'm only reading in the morning and then in the evening, and not for very long periods of time, but I devoured this thing in less than a week. Then I went ahead and got volume two, and then volume three, and volume four, and it's just, it's just, uh, just, just wonderful. <clears throat> so volume one is a little thinner than the others, it's sixty-five dollars. Uh, these, these three are seventy-five dollars each. So yeah, yeah, you're going to put a little money into it, but it is worth it. Let me read to you the ad copy from Mike Caveney's website, Magic Words. Dot shop, by the way. If you're looking for it, it's www.magicwords.shop. So go there, take a look. From the files of Egyptian Hall Museum, I'm going to talk about the Egyptian Hall Museum, distinguish it from the Egyptian Hall in, in England. <clears throat> from the files of Egyptian Hall Museum, Mike Caveney has selected letters of historical importance. Sometimes the writer or recipient or both are well-known names, while other times the players are totally unknown but every letter sheds new light on a shadowy corner of Magic's fascinating history. After placing each letter in context, Mike provides additional information about the people, places, tricks, theaters, and everything else that might be mentioned in the letters, illustrating it with rare memorabilia from his collection. It's like taking a guided tour through the historical files of the Egyptian Hall Museum by its curator, and by the way, Mike Caveney is its current curator. Uh, includes annotations, previously unseen photographs, posters, and other rare memorabilia fully indexed. And by the way, at the end of each letter commentary, he gives a bibliography of references where he drew his historical material. And I'd like to share with you two of the references that no matter where you open, let me, let me just give it, I'm opening randomly now, just anywhere. Right here on page 227, he has a bibliography and he lists Ask Alexander, askalexander.com, and Magic of Pictorial History of Conjurers in the Theaters by David Price. Both of those are, are referred to over and over again in these books and, and, and there's a very significant reason and folks don't miss this. If you are interested in magic history, as I am, do not miss these two references. Make no mistake about it. If Mike Caveney refers to them time and time again in these volumes, they have to be significant. You go and take a look at them, I think you'll find out why. Magic of Pictorial History of Conjurers in the Theater by David Price was published in 1985. David Price was the curator of the Egyptian Hall Museum for many, many years. And he wrote this book based on his collection, based on the museum, the, the information there, primary sources. 
I have the book in my library. I've read it. It's absolutely indispensable. Uh, if you're interested in magic history, you must pick that up. I'll do a I'll do a presentation on that at another time so you can get a look at the actual book. The other reference that he constantly refers to is Ask Alexander. Ask Alexander is a website www.askalexander.org and uh, there, there are membership levels. I'm going to give those to you now. I'm going to put them down below so you can take a look at them as well as the links, by the way. Uh, there's the uh, Charlier, which is $95 a year. There's the Erdnays, which is $495. Hofsinger, which is $245. Active Military, $65. And Institutional, $95. Now, each of these levels allows you greater and greater access. Now, you can actually go to Ask Alexander and sign up for free and get some access. But once you, once you subscribe... Uh, all these documents are open to you. Fantastic place to do research. Wouldn't miss it. Now let me give you a little bit of history on the Egyptian Hall Museum. The Egyptian Hall Museum is a United States phenomenon. It was not affiliated with the Egyptian Hall in London. There was a person in 1895. In 1895, W.W. Durbin opened a small theater in his backyard in Kenton, Ohio. That he called the Egyptian Hall after the John Neville Mescaline and George Alfred Cook Egyptian Hall in Piccadilly. Uh, by the way, uh, Mescaline and Cook and then later Devant operated an Egyptian Hall from approximately 1873 to 1904. So, so the Egyptian Hall in America would have been open uh, during the heyday of the Egyptian Hall in, in England. Uh, he collected posters and other memorabilia which he lined the walls of the theater with at this particular location in Kenton, in Kenton, Ohio. In 1926, the first ever magic convention was held at the Egyptian Hall Museum in Kenton, Ohio. In 1953, David Livingston Pierce Jr. purchased the context of what was then an enormous collection from W.W. Durbin's Egyptian Hall in Canton, Ohio, and moved it to Nashville, Tennessee, where he provided, presided over it for many, many years. After David's death, his son David Price III, a circus enthusiast and former magician, took over the museum and eventually sold most of the contents to Mike Caveney and George Daly in the year 2000. And that, folks, is a little bit of a history of the Egyptian Hall Museum. Again, classic correspondence. These are the letters that went back and forth between entertainers, uh, managers, uh, bookers, you name it. And, and it is chock full of extremely significant historical anecdotes. I would not miss it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you've not done so already. Please comment down below. I love your comments. Have a great day.